Okay, so um, this is the Hitachi Resaw. Um, you can say it's 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 not a huge machine, although um, it, it, it's um, I wanted one of these in the '80s. Uh, of course, they were about four thousand dollars, and couldn't really afford it. Uh, very quite interesting. Um, you know, this is back when when uh, I guess the Japs were trying to get into. Uh, um, the um, the market here, but there's some really nice. It's 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 made really good. This is solid cast iron uh, wheels, no rubber. So this blade runs directly on on steel. Uh, big three inch wide, very balanced. Um, little oil cups for the ways. Uh, everything's moving quite quite smoothly. Pretty massive bearing blocks. Um, you can see the bearings are, you know, they're about, uh, oh, they're they're pretty big. They're they're uh, there's almost the size of the bearings in my big, huge um, um, uh, uh, Wadkin. You can see they're they're pretty big here, the gearbox. Um, so although it's a, a tiny little machine, it's it's fairly robust. The the guides are, uh, you know, um, very good. They run thin blades. Resaws about, uh, t I believe, 12 inches. Um, you know, I I'm not going to jackify this machine, but um, we're going to stick a big uh, uh, five horsepower motor on it. Originally, they they were designed to run on 110, but much of the complaints most people had were were um, you know, uh, they were underpowered and loud because they used a brush motor. So uh, we'll just set this up for resaw. Uh, nice short fence, um, locks here, rack and pinion. Um, you know, very nice. I believe I'm not sure it pops off, but uh, pretty happy with that and. Uh, you know, so everything's everything turns. I'm not sure about the bearings. Might just repack them. Uh, but uh, like I said, I'm just going to put it to work. It's a few things that are bent, but nothing serious. Not my traditional cast iron stuff, but uh, these are really, really good saws. Especially uh, these these are carbide tipped, and so if you're you know sometimes you're doing some square cutting work and and uh, you know you don't want that circle cut to come into an inside corner so so these become great saws for for um, you know great great saws for 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 doing uh, tenons on big timbers or or just really deep deep cheap cuts on 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 doors uh, uh, so, you know, um, we're definitely going to use it. I'll, I'll, I'll jack it up on a pallet. I'll make a timber frame pallet that's on wheels and we'll just roll it uh, where we need it. I think it's fantastic. Anyway, uh, the other thing is, is um, this is the rotary induction motor that, uh, that came with it. Of course, this thing's... Uh, pretty massive. Um, you can see that. Uh, so there's the. That's all you're hearing there. Now, Jarrett seems to think that um, that this might only be a horsepower, but I I don't know how to tell how to do that. But um, you know, I don't know if you can. If I can see the see the wires back in there, but um, maybe maybe you can. I'll open up the pecker head, but they they look like they're you know 12 gauge. You know, just back in there. I don't know if you can see them. You see the size of the wire back in there. That's pretty, pretty big, half the size of my finger. 
Um, if that's an indication of horsepower, uh, windings look with that red paint like it's just freshly been done. Um, so I'm suspecting it's not one horsepower. Uh, it's, you know, it's possibly uh, three or five horsepower. I guess my question is, how would I determine that considering it has no motor plate? Anyway, thanks for watching. Bye.